Hey everybody, we're going to make a video today. Uh, we're going to report back on the 9-11 and the coolant information back from Blackstone Labs, the, the analysis that we did on that coolant, to see whether or not I really needed to change that fluid. Um, I hope that you've seen that video already. It's a little bit long and I really did try to make that video as short as I possibly could, but it was a bit of a research and a bit of work as I took each one of those connections apart and all of that. Um, so trying to bring a couple of hours of work down into the smallest video I could still did tend to be a little bit long. So kudos to you if you watch that whole thing. And hey, the whole reason for making this channel today, or I guess maybe the ceremony of it, is that today the channel reached 9-11 subscribers. So that's kind of cool right? Um, so thanks to everybody who have subscribed. I hope the videos have been some help or entertainment or whatever for you. Uh, certainly that's my hope uh, to, to be valuable to somebody. Okay, so getting right into the Blackstone uh, results for the coolant change. Um, on the 9-11, I changed the coolant because I just didn't think that a lifetime fluid was real. Uh, as I've seen reference in Porsche materials su suggesting that there is no change interval for the coolant on the 911 because the fluid is considered lifetime. And so, in fact, in you, if you look in your maintenance manual, it'll give you an intervals of when to check the coolant level and to inspect its antifreeze property, but there isn't any interval to change it. Uh, but I wanted to do that because I just felt like that a 2012 with 65,000 miles on it was old enough to, to get changed. And so I, I wanted to do that. Um, but I also was, li I like science and I wanted to see, well, do I really need to do that? Especially when I saw the coolant pouring so kind of pink and clear with um, uh, clear debris. There was, there was nothing weird in it. It didn't, it looked perfect. And so I thought, man, maybe, maybe this stuff does last a lot longer than I thought. And so it was another reason to run the test to see had it gone acidic or or you know whatnot so um, I want to share those results with you but first just real briefly let me give you a little backstory on um, antifreeze technology so I did a good bit of research and reading looked up data sheets for the uh, antifreeze coolant like what is in the 991 uh, which importantly I'm not trying to rep the brand here I don't get uh, sponsored by anybody um, but it's this G40 technology is what really matters for the 911, uh, for the 991 at least. I think most of them all still use the same, um, but it is that G40, that's the key thing if you wanna do that coolant yourself. It does happen to be a pink color. Color is not super significant, um, but color is added by the manufacturers as a means of identifying the different antifreeze technology. And so uh, tech, the color can be very helpful in that regard. So the technology that is used in the 991 is what's called a silicate enhanced organic acid technology, okay, or a SI oat is, is the way they uh, reference it, which was described as a state-of-the-art SI organic acid technology. It's in an ethylene glycol base. Um, Xerox uses a pink color they say that it is good for five years or 150,000 miles. Now, Peak uh, manufactures some coolant that's a violet or purple color that they say also is good for Porsches. And they claim that their fluid is good for 15 years or 400,000 miles. Um, so, but both of them are a premium grade, long life SIO formula and that they are both nitrate, uh, amine, and phosphate free. They contain no mi borates, or nitrates. And uh, again, the uh, Xerox says five years or 150,000 miles. They guarantee that it will protect the engine against failure that would be caused by freeze up or boil over. Okay, so Coolant's come a long way from the old school um, inorganic acid technology, the old traditional green stuff that needed to be replaced every 36,000 miles. 
um, there's the next step has become the organic acid technology, similar to what's in the Porsche, but the, again, the Porsche is still different than that because it is silicate enhanced. But the, um, the organic acid technology or what's called OAT, um, that's often found in blue for Subaru, Toyota's red, uh, Volkswagen, Audi will use a G12 purple. And um, there's another technology called the hybrid organic acid technology or the HOAT, H-O-A-T. Uh, that's typically yellow or orange. It also has 150,000 mile kind of service life, five to seven years, same as the, um, the OAT. Um, but it's interesting here as I did a lot of research and I read a lot of data sheets and product data, I came across a, a kind of a reoccurring theme and, uh, you know, with a comment being that all antifreeze breaks down over time and needs to be changed. Man, that sure seems like common sense, right? It, it does make sense that it would need to be changed. And so Porsche having the line of that it's lifetime, uh, that didn't just seem to, that didn't seem fit to me. So it's my car. I decided to change it. But I did wonder, well, am I really needed to do this? So I sent off the results, a sample of the, of the uh, coolant to Blackstone Labs. They're great. I've been testing oil with them for decades and I really appreciate their help. And, and so, so for 45 bucks, I got this report back here and they have said this coolant is in usable condition. No hydrocarbons or nitrate additives were found. The specific gravity read 1.08 and the pH came back at 8.04 which is normal. Uh, the freeze point of negative 39 degrees Fahrenheit is fine. So I didn't need to change the coolant, at least not yet. Um, I'm still glad that I did though. At, at this many miles, uh, I felt like I just got good peace of mind. Had I not done all this, I wouldn't know. So I'm glad that I did do it. Um, so the specific gravity at 1.08 is the reading of the sample I sent in but what should it have been? Like, or what's brand new coolant, right? So I was really glad that Xerox provided that data on their website. And they say that 1.125 is typical with 1.135 being the specification that they're aiming for. So 1.12 being new, 1.08 being mine. So I'm a little bit off. Um, but but very close, very close. Uh, and then the pH came back at 8.04. And typical or the spec on that is anywhere between 8 and 9. So I was I was still good near the bottom of that. If, if you got to be between 8 and 9. And I was at 8.04. Um, so I was near the bottom. Um, 8.5 being a um, kind of a, a typical where they realm of where they would like to be. And that's what the 50-50 uh, distilled water um, antifreeze mix, a 50-50 mix, uh, 8.5 being typical, but anywhere between eight and nine being the spec they're shooting for. So again, I was in, in spec there, but I guess if somewhat near the bottom, less than the 8.5, which meant I'm slightly more acidic than it normally would have been. And then freeze point, they, yes, the spec is that it's gotta reach a negative 34 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or be, you know, protect to that level. And this tested at Blackstone to protect at negative 39. So everything was good on the coolant. And so you can decide for yourself on your 991.1, do you need to change the coolant at 65,000 miles? Or do you, uh, the way I did, I, there was nothing that said that I needed to do it then. Um, or do you just wait, um, right? Because obviously 65,000 miles is a whole lot less than the 150,000 miles that it says right here. But 12 years old is a bunch more than the five years that it recommends. So it was time that I felt like uh, was my on, not on my side and why I chose to do it like that. But... Anyway, I'll wrap up the video, and those are the analysis results. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. Uh, although I wouldn't mind staying at 911 subscribers for a long time. That's kind of cool. Um, otherwise, 1,000 subscribers and beyond uh, might be good for the channel. 
Um, thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for the next time I do some uh, maintenance either on the 911 or the Macan. Catch you later.